Welcome back to Newswire. We've got a lot to cover with Matthew Waters from Legal Sports Report. The state of Michigan looking to block one of the sports betting operators overseas is made for an interesting story. We'll dive into that. And also we bring in uh, Matthew to talk about uh, a company that it looks like did very well for themselves. Uh, the name Typico, which I know that there are some people familiar with, maybe some others who are not. Uh, Matthew, anytime a company gets purchased, I think congratulations, probably in order. Uh, who ended up purchasing Typico and what does this mean for their future? Yeah, MGM bought Typico and Typico is actually owned by a larger um, group also named Typico, but they are, um, they're huge in Germany. So uh, they have an, a greatly established sports betting business over in Europe. Uh, they know what they're doing. And when they entered the U.S., they did so a little slower than others, um, and they built their own platform. They didn't want to take anything from Europe. They said, we want to build a platform that <clears throat> kind of restarts everything. We can build it to what the American market is doing. Um, but obviously, they had a lot of help from what they learned in Europe, building that Euro, uh, platform over there, right? So MGM, MGM has the BetMGM partnership, as we know, with Entain. And MGM just did not want to be in a joint venture for international at this point. They they said, you know, we would like to do this on our own. <clears throat> they had tried to buy into in a couple of times, and that just never worked out. And so they had said that they were looking for sports betting technology after they went out and bought Leo Vegas, um, another online gaming company that has great online casino established in Europe, and they have a sports book. That was powered by another industry supplier that we've talked about before, Canby. So now MGM gets to take the BetMGM brand into international markets. It's already in the UK. Um, they get to have that brand over there. And now they're going to be able to have everything under the hood of MGM, which should allow them, you know, you always think about cost savings first. Those third party contracts can get um, expensive when you get to a higher scale. So you hope to cut down on that. And then also you just hope to make the product better, right? You're going to be able to get things done quicker. You're not waiting on outside parties to get work done so you can be flexible. They talk about, you know, they always say, can you be nimble with your product? Yeah, they're going to be able to do that. They're going to be able to add games quickly. They're going to be able to um, add updates quickly. So MGM has what it wants now in the international market. Um, this should have no effect on the U.S. market right now, but... Who knows at the end of their contract if if MGM can now say, you know, we're going to do this on our own. But BetMGM has worked out well so far in the U.S. with the two sides. And Tain has admitted that it's been a little slow to act before to get BetMGM what it needed to, uh, to be um, competitive, quite frankly, in the U.S. market with, you know, the FanDuel and the DraftKings. So, uh, you know, <laughs> is this an answer to all of those issues? You know, we'll, we'll have to wait a couple of years to find that out. But right now, MGM is building itself its own iGaming operation. I think that as, as the future kind of comes uh, with some of these companies, especially the smaller ones, we're, we've seen a little bit of this with, uh, I believe, Prize Picks was one of them. Um, you know, we saw Fanatics get involved. I am curious how some of the other operators will move forward, whether or not now is the time for them to get out. All right, uh, Bovada, it was the time for them to get out of Michigan. I, 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 you'll have to kind of catch me up here on the timeline here because I had heard a few weeks ago that the state of Michigan did not want uh, Bovada to be operating in their state. You and I, I, I think, kid around about this. It's like, wait a second, they're already illegal. They're offshore. <laughs> so what is the demand actually going to do? And it looks like Michigan, Matthew, has taken some preemptive steps here, kind of like you're not allowed to bet in states that's not legal. You can't even access Bovada at all now in the state of Michigan. So tell me how this went down. Well, Craig, that's how it started off. Uh, Thursday, we noticed that Bovada had added Michigan um, as well as Colorado to its list of banned states. And at first it wasn't available in Michigan. And now it seems like it is again available in Michigan and Colorado. And look, we haven't heard from regulators they haven't wanted to confirm if the website is still available but um various people i know that live in the state in those states have checked um i we've been checking it via vpn in different places and it does seem like you can still go on and bet on bovada in these states so 
yeah, Colorado and Michigan, and we have Connecticut as well now. They have sent cease and desist letters recently to Bovada, um, and they added them to the list of banned states, but it's not acting that way. Like, for example, Craig, I live in Delaware. Bovada right. is banned in Delaware, and it actually is banned in Delaware. It's not just on the list. When I go to open it up, it says you can't access this. It doesn't even give me an option to create an account. Um, it says if you have an account and you want to withdraw funds or something, uh, you can log in here, but you can't actually do anything else. But that is just not happening in Michigan and Colorado yet. So, um, you know, Michigan said that they were going to continue to monitor the process to make sure Bovada was completely complying with the cease and desist. Um, and we're, we're just not sure when and if that is going to happen completely now at this point. One other issue that I noticed too, when um, Connecticut sent their cease and desist, they made it very clear that they want their customers to be able to get their money back. And Bovada is only allowing cryptocurrency withdrawal in states that have had operations closed down. Mm. Um, so is that going to be okay with the um, with the Connecticut regulator? I, I don't know. I, I asked and I haven't gotten an answer back on that either. And it, you can understand why there's a limited flow of information on the record here, Craig. It's it's a messy yeah. situation. It is hard because even though they have a physical address for this site, and obviously Bovada is known throughout the industry, it's still kind of a nebulous, you know, where are they sending that cease and desist? Does it, is it getting to the people that need to have it? Um, and so uh, this is one of those stories where you want to see the regulated industry win and it's interesting that Bovada was quick to act on other states and is not now. Um, and we're just going to have to see how this shakes out because, again, they can send a cease and desist as much as they want, but it's hard for a state to really shut down what a country is doing that's a company is doing that's licensed in a foreign country somewhere else. Yeah, no, I, this is a perplexing story how it could be available and not available. I mean, once and for all, we got to figure out what these offshores are going to be all about in the future. All right. Uh, not a surprising story over a legal sports report that I read about uh, Penn Entertainment. I mean, the writing is on the wall here, Matt. Like, I don't know. Like, it feels like they were at their peak when sports betting began a couple of years ago, but everything since then does not give me a ton of optimism. And so what is the latest uh, for Penn? And, and look, if they get bought out, just like Tipico, just like some of the others, kudos to them. But it does feel like maybe that's uh, that's in the future. Yeah, you know, there has been a lot of chatter now about Penn and uh, Boyd Gaming, another regional casino operator um, uh, that is a direct competitor of Penn. There's been a lot of chatter about Boyd now trying to buy Penn. And this all started when an investor wrote an open letter to Penn Management, the chairman, the board of directors, and took them to task and just said, look, it has been unacceptable to see the level of online losses that we've seen the, you know, they've spent, they've burnt a lot of money, Craig. They've essentially set it on fire with all the barstool stuff and then selling it back for a dollar to Dave Portnoy. And so now Boyd is apparently interested in buying Penn. It's not going to be that easy though, uh, Craig. They have, they own a lot of properties in the same states. They would have to find a third party there to buy that. Um, and one analyst, Carlos Santorelli of Deutsche Bank said, if Boyd buys it, they are probably selling the interactive side of Penn and the ESPN partnership immediately. So you would have to have another buyer there. So now you're talking about four parties and then Penn as a, a landlord, five parties that have to get on board for the steal. Uh, that would be tough. But, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And th this one is, is heating up. Yeah, definitely so. All right, Matthew, great stuff as always. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks for coming on Newswire. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Take care.